This is our potentiometer. We have two terminals either end, x and y, and then we have a sliding contact that moves along from x to y. And then what you can do is you can put a voltmeter in between those two terminals uh, to measure the voltage across part of the resistor. And depending on how far along you move z, you will pick up a smaller or, or larger voltage. And we're trying to work out the thickness in this question. And we're told things like resistivity, resistance, we're given a length, we're given an end view of the track. End view of the track basically means we're looking from, from like this direction. So this would be a cross section, a cross -section of, the, of the track. Um, so we're given effectively an area from these two as well, a cross-sectional area. So that suggests that we're going to be using the equation resistance is equal to resistivity times length over area. So the area is the width times the thickness. The width is equal to the 0 0.005 meters. And we're told the resistivity. Resistivity is 0 0.49. We're told the length. Length is the length of the entire track. It says in the question that the resistance of the track between x and y is 12,000. So that's the entire thing. And therefore, the length would be uh, 115 millimeters or 0 0.115 meters. And finally, we're given the resistance as well. So the resistance is 12,000 ohms. So this is the same thing, what we have here, as resistivity times length over width times thickness. We're trying to get thickness. So we can rearrange this equation for thickness, as that's what we're trying to work out. It's then equal to resistivity times length over resistance times width. And then we can put everything in. So 0 0.49 times the length divided by the resistance multiplied by the width. And we type that in and we end up with 9.3. 392 times 10 to the minus 4. And the question gives quantities to 2 sig figs, 3 sig figs, 2 sig figs, 3 sig figs. So the lowest is 2 sig figs. So let's um, give our answer to 2 sig figs as well. 9.4 10 to the minus 4 meters. So that's part A done. For part B, so we have a, a moving tool. The moving tool is attached to this sliding contact, Z. So that's the same as, as what we have here. And um, we're told that the tool moves through a maximum displacement of 60 millimeters from end X. So the highest it can go is going to be 60 millimeters. And we're told that that produces a maximum potential difference of 5 volts between Z and X. So we would have 5 volts here when the terminal Z is 60 millimeters up from X. So the question is asking us to then work out the potential difference between X, Y, X and Y. So that's going to be about 10 volts. We can use the fact that voltage splits in the same ratio as resistance for resistors in series. We can consider this as two resistors, one here and one here. Those two are in series. We know that resistance is equal to resistivity times length over area. And because for this resistor, resistivity and cross-sectional area don't change, then that means that resistance is proportional to length. And if voltage splits in the same ratio as resistance, voltage is proportional to resistance, and therefore voltage is proportional to length. So going back to the previous part, we know the length of the entire resistor XY is 115. Therefore, this distance here should be 55 millimeters. And then those ratios of lengths, so 60 to 55, should be the same as the ratio of voltages, 5 to some unknown value which I'll call V. And then, so if those two ratios are equal, we can form an equation. V over 5 is equal to 55 over 60. Bring the 5 up. V is then 55 over 60 
times 5, we then end up with 4.583 volts. And that's the voltage across this top part of the resistor. And therefore, the voltage across the entire resistor, so from x to y, the, the final answer would then be those two things added up. So that would be 5 plus 4.583, or 9.583. And that's approximately 10 volts. The next part wants us to work out the resistance of R. So we've now got the voltage across this resistor. We know the voltage across XY is 9.583 volts. We know the resistance of XY from the previous part. So that was the, the length of this whole thing. That's, that's the resistor XY. That's, that has a resistance of 12,000 ohms. So this is 12,000. We can then work out the current in this resistor and therefore in the whole circuit. Because remember that this is a series circuit. So current's the same everywhere. So current is then Vxy all over Rxy. So 9.583 over 12,000, which gives us 7.9 eight six times ten to the minus four amps and then we can use the voltage across the other component so if we look at this we have 12 volts here we have 9.6 volts roughly there so if we do 12 minus the 9.6 we get the voltage there so if I write that down in the working so 12 volts minus the 9.583 and that gives us 2.417 so this is then the voltage across the resistor if we then do the voltage across that resistor divided by the current we end up with the resistance so the resistance will be 2.417 all divided by the current 7.986 times 10 to the minus 4 and that gives us 3,027, which is about 3,000. So that will be our answer. For this part, we're told that when the circuit is assembled, we're using the correctly calculated resistance value and a battery of EMF 12 volts. We find that the output voltage is a bit less than 5 volts. So why is this the case? And that would be because there is internal resistance. So if there is internal resistance, that means that we will lose some voltage across that internal resistance. So voltage will be dropped across the internal resistance. And therefore, we have less available for the external components. So the terminal PD will decrease. For this next part, we're told that the tool on the machine should not travel with a speed greater than 0 0.8 meters per second. And then we're given a graph of displacement against time. And the question is asking us to deduce whether this speed is exceeded by the moving tool. So if we have a graph of displacement against time, the gradient of that graph is velocity, or the magnitude of the gradient of that graph is speed. So if we work out the gradient, at the steepest part of the graph, we then have the greatest speed. And then we can compare that to the 0 0.8 that we have. So let's draw a tangent for this graph. So there is a tangent for the steepest part of the graph. We can work out now the gradient of this or the magnitude of the gradient of this. So the change in y or the change in displacement, if we consider this point as well as this point. So the change in y, if this is 60, well then this will be 40, this will be 20, this will be 70. So the magnitude of the change of displacement is 70, but that would be in millimeters, so 70 times 10 to the minus 3. That's our change in y. 
and then divide this by our change in x. All right, so then we are given 25 small intervals is 0 0.1 second. So therefore, if we do 0 0.1 divided by 25, we get 0 0.004. So each one of these small intervals is 0 0.004 seconds. And therefore, one of these bigger intervals, because that's 10 small intervals, would be 0 0.04 seconds. So that's 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12. This is 0 0.16. Therefore, this will be 0 0.14. And if we look at the point that we have over here, so that goes all the way down to here, that would be 0 0.044. And so our change in time is 0 0.14 minus 0 0.044. We put this into our calculator we end up with 0 0.729. So it's about it's about 0 0.73 meters per second. And 0 0.73 meters per second is less than 0 0.8, which is the maximum speed that is allowed. So it's within the limit. So we have a brief conclusion, and that will be enough for this question.